Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor of website sciencewriter.net. If you think that this is a strange video with amongst a strange amalgam of videos, you can find a lot more strange amalgam stuff linked from my website URL sciencewriter.net. I am a ham radio operator, amateur radio operator, call sign W1GV, Whiskey One Golf Victor. Although I got that call sign when I lived in Connecticut in 1977 and worked at ARRL headquarters, I moved to various other places and kept this call sign. They didn't make you change the call number after about 1970, I guess. So I'm still W1GV. I've had that call sign now for going on 35, 36 years, and I live in the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. That's my information. What I'm going to talk about here, though, is a propagation mode, a radio wave propagation mode popular amongst some very high-tech and relatively wealthy amateur radio operators, a mode known as Moon Bounce, also called Earth Moon Earth, or EME communications, and as you might guess from that term, and from this picture, courtesy of NASA, the Earth, uh, the Earths, yes, the Earths, and the United States National Aeronautics and Space Administration, all images in this video are courtesy of NASA. Moon bounce, Earth, Moon, Earth. Well, as you might guess, that's where radio hams bounce their signals off the moon. And it's primarily done at frequencies above 144 megahertz. Frequencies above 144 megahertz. And the mode that is used almost exclusively is CW continuous wave, also commonly known as Morse code, on-off keyed carrier. The most popular bands for this mode are 144 megahertz band, the 220 megahertz band, and the 432 megahertz ham radio band. Those are wavelengths of about 2 meters, 1.25, and 0.75 meters respectively. Occasionally you will also find radio hams doing uh, moon bounce at higher frequencies, although it takes more and more high-tech and expensive uh, transmitters and receivers in order to get enough power and gain at those frequencies, particularly enough power, at 1296 megahertz and I believe there's another band up around 2300 megahertz. That's probably also been done. But in any case, this particular mode of communications is much simpler than, uh, much simpler in terms of its geometry than meteor scatter, aurora, or sky wave propagation, as I discussed in other videos. But it's a lot harder to come by. It's sort of like reaching up and grabbing hold of the moon is an easy thing, an easy concept. But doing it, something a little bit more difficult. Going there is a little bit more difficult. Well, it can be done. You need maximum legal limit power, high gain antennas, and extremely sensitive receivers. And all that costs a lot of money. It helps if you live in a place where there isn't a lot of terrestrial human-made noise. Uh, you need uh, high-gain antennas, oftentimes are large dishes or large arrays of Yagi antennas, also known as beam antennas. But you also need to be able to track the moon with the antenna because it needs to be very directional if it's going to have all that gain. But if you've got the money and you've got the technical will and you've got the ham radio license, you can go ahead and do it. And it also really helps if you know the Morse code, because that's just about the only mode that's going to work in this particular propagation scheme. 
Now, as we see it here, of course, this is a view of the moon from the Earth. It, because of the fact that it was taken through a telephoto lens from a satellite, its, its perspective is kind of out of whack. The moon looks a lot bigger than it really looks from the Earth, as you can guess. But when your signal goes up there, suppose you use just just for the sake of uh, just for the sake of argument let's suppose we decide to do this on a frequency of 432 megahertz that's only about 75 centimeters wavelength the moon is many hundreds and thousands of kilometers away from the earth so it's many 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 wavelengths but it's always moving with respect to the earth it's getting closer and farther away imperceptibly slowly but just a few centimeters at a wavelength this short is going to make a lot of difference in the phase of the signal that bounces back to you also your signal isn't just going to bounce off the center of the moon, the visual geometric center. It's going to bounce off a whole lot of different points, depending on the terrain on the moon. So, uh, you, you're going to get a whole bunch of returned waves. For example, you're going to get returned waves from near the edge of the moon, like this particular image shows. All it takes is for a signal to uh, to come from s the edge of one of these craters where the angle of the terrain is just right and you're going to get a reflection. You're going to get thousands and thousands and countless thousands of waves coming back at you. And because of the fact that the moon is constantly moving further away and closer and further away and closer to the Earth, you're going to have all kinds of different phases occurring. Uh, in that wave. There's another phenomenon that uh, happens here and that is a phenomenon called libration. Now don't get this confused with libation. It is not drinking. It is libration. That is a form of fading that occurs because of wobbling of the moon, libration fa fading. The moon keeps pretty much the same face towards the earth all the time, but not exactly. Now you can see on this picture here, here's South America. The equator runs right through, right about like this. So we're actually kind of looking at the moon with a slanted ahead <laughs> the earth the moon wobbles back and forth from left to right which would be like left over here and right over here so sometimes we see a little more of this face this uh, edge sometimes we see a little more of this edge that libration creates constant changes in the distance between each point on the moon and the earth for example once again, let's look at that limb of the moon. Imagine that uh, the libration is taking place and the moon's equator runs diagonally just like this. Then this upper part right here is going to be moving towards us for a while and then away from us for a while and then towards us for a while and then away from us for a while. And remember that at 432 megahertz, oops, what I got to do here is paste that back in so you can see it. I'm, you know, trying to lay one picture over the top of each other, and this program remembers uh, which one I cut and pasted last. Well, <laughs> say that as you may. Anyway, here we have the points that you can see, all these signals bouncing off of here and coming back at you in various phases that are constantly shifting. You're going to get heavy duty phase modulation on that signal in addition to the libration fading, which is caused by the relative cancellation and then reinforcement of all those many, many, many signals. You know, they're all at the same wavelength, all at the same frequency but their phases are constantly changing. Not only does that produce fading, the libration that I talked about, but it also produces phase modulation on the signal. So once again, 
the only uh, mode that you're really going to get any kind of useful communication out of is CW. You might try PSK31, but lots of luck. You've already got rapid and deep fading and phase shift uh, occurring on this signal. You try to use a phase shift keyed signal, it's going to mess it up. It, it's going to sound very much like the signal that comes off the Aurora. Constantly shifting in phase, constantly fading. It's going to have this watery, warbling, rapid flutter and it's going to be smeared out over a considerable band of frequencies probably up to several hundred hertz wide even if it's a CW signal so what you're going to hear is like a a signal that you might say RST oh maybe readability 4 strength 4 and remember the old T they always send 9 now because nobody's got a tone that's anything but perfect but it's going to sound pretty raw when it comes off the moon like this. So you'd give somebody a report like 442 or 441. Rough, raw wave. Because that's what it's going to sound like. But you'll still be able to read it if you use CW. So once again, my call sign is W1GV. You will not find me yet on Moon Bounce. But you will find me on 14, 18, 21, and 24 megahertz using CW and PSK31. Enjoy if you got Moon Bounce uh, and you're using Moon Bounce. <laughs> Bless your soul and have fun. 73 from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America, Stan Jabalisco saying so long.